Ever wondered how Netflix knows exactly what you want to watch next? What if I told you that with just five lines of code, you can build a similar prediction system yourself? In this short video, I'll show you the magic of Scikit-Learn or Scikit-Learn, the beginner-friendly Python library that's powering all the AI predictions worldwide, from identifying flower species to predicting market trends to recommending your next favorite show. Hello, future machine learning maestros. I'm Dr. Yona Thiessen, a data scientist and Udacity instructor. And in the next few minutes, I'll show you how to build your very first machine learning model using Scikit-Learn. First, I'll give you a brief introduction to this module, followed by an explanation of what machine learning is all about. And next, we'll move into the Python notebook or a code walkthrough so you can see just how easy this process is. So what is Scikit-Learn or SK-Learn as we call it? It's Python's premier machine learning toolkit. It's incredibly excellent accessible for beginners, but also powerful enough for experts. SKLearn is compatible with the Python data ecosystem, pandas and NumPy and matplotlib and so on. It is also capable of handling everything from predictions to classifications to clustering, any type of modeling that you can think of. Now, what is machine learning? Think of machine learning like baking a cake. Your data is the ingredients, the raw material that determine what the final model can become. The algorithm algorithm is like the recipe, the specific instructions that transforms the raw data into insight. Then Python modules are the utensils, the tools that makes the process so much easier and more efficient. And then the model training where the transformation happens, that's like the oven where the patterns are baked into the algorithm. And then finally, the model evaluation is like the taste testing, checking to see how well your creation turned out. This simple process follows five key steps. First, there is the loading of your data to ensure that the processing and the modeling of the data can begin. Then there is the exploration of your data. It's not necessary, but it's always best practice because this is where you get an understanding of the data, what type of data, the quality of the data, whether it's missing values, patterns, outliers. You begin to understand the relationships between the features in your data. Once you've done the exploration, now you can split your data. And there's two splitting that happens. There's the splitting of the data frame into the features X and the Y that you're trying to predict. And then when you split into X and Y, you further split the X and Y each into the train and the test because you need to have some data set aside, some unseen data that can be used to evaluate the model's performance. And finally, evaluating the performance of your model. This is where you test your model to see how well it works on new data and to determine whether it's valid. Valuable. So here we are inside of the IPython notebook, Google Colab, and I start by loading in all of the modules that I would need for building my prediction machine learning model. NumPy and Pandas and, and Seaborn and Matplotlib. But most importantly, we need SKLearn because that is the machine learning module. We're also going to get the built-in data sets in SKLearn. Now, commonly data is imported into our notebook using the pd.read underscore CSV function. To give you an example of how that works, we have some samples we could actually easily load into our notebook using that function. But that's not the data set we'll be using. Here we're using the iris data set for predicting the species of flowers. This comes in as a data type known as a bunch, but we can extract the features and the target names and use that to build a data frame so we can see what the data looks like. And here we have our data frame, the four features, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. And in the last column, we have the species, the target that we're going to predict. This is an example of the data. They measured the length and the width of the petal, also the width and the length of the sepal, and recorded that along with the identification of the class or the species to which the flowers belong. Now we can explore our data. We use dot shape to tell us just how large our data set is. Here we have 150 rows and five columns. The dot info to get information about the type of features. All four features are numeric or specifically float. The target is a category 
Oracle type variable called an object type in Python. The dot describe to give some idea of how the data is distributed. The basic statistics compose our data set. So now we can look at the sepal length and we see that the mean length here is 5.8 with a standard deviation of 0.8 and so on. The sepal length average is three. We can also check to see if there are any missing values in our data set and there are none. Then we want to visualize the distribution of the values. It's one thing to see it in numeric form, but there are certain things that can best be understood from the graphs or plot. So using the dot his plot function, we plot a histogram for each of the features. The sepal length, they are more or less normally distributed, whereas for petal length and petal width, there is some kind of a separation or bimodality. The pair plot function from the Seaborn module shows us when we use the species or the target as the hue, we can see all of the flowers separated by colors. And we can tell right away that setosa are the smaller of the flowers because they are all concentrated in the lower left-hand portion of the scatter plots. And the histogram for the setosa is narrower and taller, so the variability for those flowers is much smaller compared to the other. We can also see whether there is any kind of relationship between the features. For example, the petal length and the petal width, there is a strong correlation between those two features. So that gives us some idea of the patterns that are in the data set. Looking specifically at the target value now, we can do a value count or a pie chart to show us that yes, there is an equal distribution of the values. Once we have explored our data, we get it ready for modeling. The first thing is to split the data. And for that, we're using the train underscore test underscore split function from sklearn. Before the split into train and test, we have to split into the features and the target using the drop function to drop the last column from our data frame and that's assigned to x and then the last column is assigned to y. Now we have our x and y. We can see both matrices. Now we can do our train test split here. 105 rows have been assigned to the training test while 45 rows have been assigned to the testing set. Now we're ready for modeling we're using the decision tree classifier from Scalar. So if we load that into our notebook. A decision tree is one of the simpler models. It's flowchart-like, which is easy to understand. It works by splitting the information in our data set based on the features. So each observation, each flower is examined and assigned to a certain category. And it keeps doing that, creating a path that eventually leads to a final prediction. Once we have imported the decision tree classify, we can instantiate a version of that model and assigning it to the variable name CLF and we're going to use that to train or to fit the training data X train and Y train. One of the good things about the decision tree, it lends itself to lovely visualizations. Here we see a visualization of our model and it tells us that the, the most important feature is the pedal length. Anything that was less than or equal to 2.45 was put into the Setosa class. Anything above that was put into this Versicola class that was further divided based on if the pedal length was less than or equal to 4.75, then it was assigned to Versicola class. If it was more than 4.75, it was assigned to the Virginica class. And it kept doing that until all of the observations were classified into one of the three species type. Now, once we have our model, we want to see how well it's performing. sklearn has a number of different functions to evaluate performance in the scalar.metrics modules. We import that and we can now make predictions with our model using the dot predict and applying that to the test set to get some predictions. And once we have the y pred values, we compare the y pred values to the actual values in the test set and see how well the model did in predicting the species. So here it says the model is 100% accurate. And of course that's expected because this is a very small, very clean, 
seen very well curated data set. The model did an excellent job. All of the predictions matched the actual data. So we have hundred percent accuracy. That is not usually the case in the real world, but that's how easy it is to build your model. You loading the data, then you exploring the data, you split the data in X and Y, and then into train and test. Then you train, train the model on the training data set and you test the model on the testing data set and you get an output on terms of how well the model is performing, whether you use accuracy or precision or whatever metrics you have chosen. We use wide a bit of hold so that you could understand the process, but fundamentally these are the lines involved in building this machine learning model, splitting the data into X and Y, then splitting into train and test, then instantiating the model, then using the X train and Y train to train the model. These five lines are all you need. Of course, there's more to it, but those are the fundamental steps. And there you have it. You have just built your first machine learning model using SKLearn or scikit-learn. With these simple steps, you can tackle countless prediction problems from predicting customer behavior to classifying images to even building recommendation systems. If you've enjoyed these tutorials, remember to hit the like button and subscribe for more machine learning shortcuts. We'll use other data sets and build other types of models. Let me know in the comments. Until next time, keep building machine learning maestros.